of a beer review. That's right. Arg. What oh. beer do we have today, Johnny? Iron Fist. Iron Fist, that's right. What beer from Iron Fist? A Velvet Glove. The Velvet Glove. So the kind of glove that they stick up your butt and test yeah. your prostate. Oh, no, that's a rubber they'll glove. Slip you the bel- <laughs> they'll slip you the Iron Fist nice and smooth. A smooth fisty. Oh. Now, this is the 2013 version of Velvet Glove. That's right. I bought this off the sale rack at the beer store known as Fish Paws for $6.99. Wait, you buy regular price. Not much. Not, not when I can help it. Not as much beer as I buy, dude. No. I gotta buy it on the cheap. Uh, so, these guys are out of Vista, California, USA. Yay, yay. And this is... Uh, an oatmeal American Imperial style. Uh, yeah, that. What kind of serving is it? Your bomber rat. serving. No, oh, that's right. serving. It's bigger than a bomber. It's a 750, man. Right. 25.4 ounces for you Imperial people. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to crack this open and start pouring and Johnny's going to tell you the other particulars of the beer. Yeah, we got 9.0 ABV. Uh, it is bottle condition. It is velvety, like the glove says. Smooth due to due to the high oatmeal content. So any donkey would like this. Yes. This donkey would. It's not good. What's nice. the ABV and IBU on it? Oh, yeah, I didn't give you the IBU. <laughs> I gave you the ABV. Yeah, 35 to 60. It's a freaking stout. Why does it matter unless it's stone when we know it's out of this world? Yes, exactly. Now, <sighs> appearance-wise, it is black. What a surprise. Real soap sudsy head on that, yeah. isn't it? When I yes. swirl it, tons of glass lacing and plenty of alcohol legs on that, but really dark body of the beer. It's kind of like a... Uh, chocolatey sort of head, but real soap sudsy, surprising. Hmm. Now, when I had this fresh back at a tasting, um, it was a little boozy, so I decided, yeah, I'm not going to buy that. But after a year in the bottle, it's pretty much about like a year and two months old from what I can, the best I can discern right now from when I bought it and everything. It should be smoothed out and less alcoholic at this point, but who knows? What's it, anything, say, anything good on the back of the bottle not, there? Not really. Not really. Probably something smooth and I got oats in it and it's like a velvet glove. So let's get an aroma on it. Chocolate, caramel, like a malty sweetness in the background, like a biscuity malt sweetness. A little bit of toffee, slight bit of coffee. A little bit of funk. Maybe a little bit, yeah. It's got a, sort of a Tootsie Roll chocolatey sort of smell to it, like that milk and and dark chocolate, like really light dark chocolate there. Yeah. Smells pretty nice. Dive in for the taste. Cheers. Really roasted. Really roast, yeah. A lot more roasted notes in the flavor than there are apparent on the aroma. Really smooth. Well, we've got that part of it down with the with the oats. Yeah. It does have a velvety appearance. It's like a we'd say like medium it's pole. It's thin. Yeah. It's a thin to medium. I, I wouldn't give it a whole medium. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, I, I mean, the oats should give it a lot more, but the oats are giving it that velvet velvetness, velvetiness, or whatever you want mm. you can call it. But it's almost lacking a little bit on the body. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Black Ops, how the carbonation cut the body. And I think the bottle conditioning in this beer, because you're going to get bottle conditioning variants. That's a disappointment. That was a big disappointment. That was an expensive-ass beer, too. Yeah, it was. But I think the almost like the bottle conditioning is cutting the body on this. Even It's got, it's almost like silky. Like if you drink a full-on oatmeal stout, Imperial Oatmeal Stout, it's got a real silkiness and smoothness as it goes down. It's like the carbonation is like cutting the body on it yeah. and I thinning mean, it out. It's, it, yeah, it's got the velvetiness to it. It's thin. It's got a good roasted roasted taste to it with chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. You know, speaky English now. I know speaky English. I mean, but it, it just lacks. It's not a... It's kind of one note. Yeah. Like, it's one note, like, in flavor. The aroma, to me, is better than the flavor. 
it's one note roast from like front to back. You're greeted with a little bit of chocolate, and then after the very tip of your tongue, it's like a big like tidal wave of roasted notes that come off of it. And usually beers like this, you know, will get a bit of like maybe Sunday dark night. fruits and stuff as they oh, age. There's a little bit of dark fruit in here. I, I can kind of get, you know, it blended in with that roastedness. Uh, and um, but you know it's it's not a it, it, yeah exactly so let's go and see what our buddies over at Rate Beer gave it they gave it 97 because it's it's above, above 8%. eight percent yes um, the dudes over at Beer Advocate gave it an 88. Being a 2013, it's interesting to see what it is given 88. I can't even come close to 97. Mm-hmm. Um, it's thin. It's just. Uh, I'm gonna have to slam another beer tonight. 78. Damn. 78. I, you know, I, you, you shit. What, what's what's like my favorite beers? Stouts. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. I mean, you got to live up to a lot. And, mm-hmm. and I... Even as a non-barrel style, it's getting the, getting the 78? Fuck yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really thin, cheesy... I mean, I've made an oatmeal stout that was 5% that had more body than this. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just... It doesn't wow me. Uh, the... You know, single note, you know, just a little bit of roastiness on the back end just, just doesn't really cut it. Hmm. Uh, sorry. Damn, Stun Trigger's pounding this. It's my iron fist. <laughs> He's giving the iron <laughs> fist great. Okay, let's, I'll, I'll go into this with the positive aspects of the beer. Be a the, pussy. The, the alcohol, <laughs> you are what you eat. The, the alcohol is well You're hidden pussy, in yeah. the nose. You're a pussy? No, I eat that. Yeah, you are what you eat. You're a pussy. Okay. Anyways, I'll go with that. Um, I don't yes. want to be a pussy. What? Anyway. I'll eat pussy, but I don't want to be a pussy. <sighs> Anyways, we'll try try to maintain composure here. You're a bald-headed pussy, too. I am bald-headed, yes. I'll give you that. I will give you that. Now, the it has... Why is your son here? Shouldn't he be upstairs when we have these discussions? Now we just ignore him. It's bad parenting, but that's okay. Um, the alcohol is well hidden. It has a nice roast character. Rose? Roast. Oh. It has a nice roast character, but really that's about it. My main detractor with this beer are, is actually two things. One, the mouthfeel really falls off on it, and it's very one note in flavor. It's roast from front to back. I'm going to have to go with like an 82. I'm going to give it a B. I'm going to give it an 83. I think it's a B beer because it's a nine percenter. The alcohol is well hidden, but man, for where if I would have bought this at full price, this would have been a like a, about a fourteen dollar bottle of beer, and it would definitely not be worth that much money. I paid six ninety nine. It's a six ninety nine beer. I'm no super master brewer. My regular stout blows this shit away, and I'm not bragging on myself, but it's got way better mouthfeel and it has a deeper depth of flavor. Uh... That's about what the grade of it is. You know, it belches maybe pretty good, but the overall flavor is just... I did say it was kind of a sudsy head. Yeah, it's just not... It's it's something that something really missing. It's only Everything. Got, yeah, it's, it's that one new... The kitchen sink is missing. The stunt drinker no likey this beer. Oh. He's a, basically a stout specialist for liking beers, right? Wouldn't you say? Like, it's scotch and... Scotch, Scotch Ale and Stouts. Scotch Ales and Stouts. And he drank a lot of them, probably more Stouts than me, I would imagine. And Amen. it's it's just, it's so one note, that's the problem. And it's lacking in body for what it's supposed to be. I don't know, I mean. It's just, it's got a funky flavor too. If you, if you drank a lot of Stouts, you'll see what I'm saying in this beer. Maybe it's this bottle, I don't know, this vintage, this 2013. Maybe there's variants in it, but... It's really just missing a lot of the, the things you expect, the chocolate flavor, the dark fruits, and different things, especially out of a cellared imperial stout like this. It's a but, shame I can't call him. 
Yeah, he... We've already called one brewery this evening, so... You've heard our grade. You may not agree with us. Let us know if you don't agree with us. We like the quid pro quo. We like the back and forth. And we also like it when you think locally, drink what's, locally, and support what's, the craft beer movement. What's, what's with the freaking Latin quid pro quo? Is that I, Latin? Or is I am multicultural and diverse, my friend. That's why you're the stunt drinker, and I'm the beer geek. That's what us beer geeks do, multicultural type things. Bullshit. You will not tamp me down, mister. <laughs> Even with your iron fist. So, to the next DJ Brew 2, thanks a million to each and every one of you for watching, rate, commenting, and subscribing and hitting the like button. That's right. Even if you don't like Johnny, you can still hit the like button. To the next DJ Brew 2, where we got more of them, a big peace out.